Hello, welcome to 50 Question Friday for August 7th, 2020. Thank you guys for being here this morning. Um, yeah, we were a little late getting out emails, so thank you guys that are here live today. Um, and again, please do put your questions into the questions uh, chat here. And um, we'll do some starting with the internet. So one of the first questions from John, can these tools and intention neutralize implants if we have them? You know, so that was something that we dealt with for several years was energetic implants. They were basically um, something that was put in energetically uh, that would cause issues with your physical um, you know, so these energetic implants, yes, the the field of the tools will help to neutralize those and also dissolve those. Um, for the majority, I mean, we've dealt with those energetic implants for several years and anymore, we don't find them as much anymore, um, but as they do occur, yes, the tools will dissolve those. Uh, and then the other question from John, can we have lots of grasshoppers in much of Montana? How would you suggest we address them so plants are not so devastated? For that matter, deer and rabbits can do a quick number on garden plants too. Suggestions about softening their impacts. Um, you know, for, for agriculture, for working with the land, for working with the animals, the plants, the divas, the, you know, everything associated with the land, the consciousness, um, the harmony generators are really a fantastic one for that. Now the seven inch harmony generator covers an area about 12 miles across. That's usually the one for agriculture that we suggest is the seven inch harmony generator. And they are programmable so you can put your intentions in there. But when we're dealing with things, um, that we perceive as like a pest or something that we perceive as not being beneficial, um, we still have to take into consideration the right to life of them. And basically, as we are, you know, I've told the story about how we did the work in New Zealand with the Beatles, where we used the generators and broadcasting to them through radionics to basically make a repelling um, energy within the field for the Beatles. But then we also created a safe haven space around the field and created like a draw for them as well. So we created a safe place for them to be. So when we're dealing with agriculture and pests, we want to be sure to treat them with that unconditional love. Um, you know, so when you are putting your intentions into the generators, the tools to keep the pests out of your garden, out of your space, um, you know, do it with a sense of, of love and gratitude towards them um, in, in the asking. So let's see, you guys, last Friday was a really strange day for me. Um, <laughs> I went off on a couple of tangents. One of them was about um, orgone. And so I do want to apologize for any of my organite friends out there um, and I did misunderstand the question. Um, the question was actually, I found out the question was from an organite maker, um, asking about organite and curing it. And I, th I thought he was asking about our particular pieces and curing them. And so I went off on the tangent about, you know, these pieces and how they're really not organite and, you know, and we cure them in our space, all that. But to revisit that question, which was about curing organite. Um, yes, using a tensor ring with your organite when you're curing it is a phenomenal thing. Using a ring to charge the crystals and the metals to clean, clear, and charge them and to charge your resin beforehand is also a phenomenal thing. Um, you know, like on our barrels of crystal that we that we use, our crushed crystal, we keep um, all kinds of tools on there, like a giant torus, the rings. Um, so we like to keep 
you know, the crystal is supercharged. And then when you are pouring resin and you are curing it, totally having a ring around it is going to harmonize everything in here. It's going to work with the, the physical structure of the resin as, you know, energetically as it is curing. Um, so, yeah, using the rings with Oregon when you were curing it is phenomenal. All right. And let's see. I don't think we had any more questions because, like I say, the email just went out a couple hours ago. And again, my apologies on the delay of the email there. Um, we don't have any more questions on email. So if you guys have some questions here, otherwise we'll do a quick heart space meditation. Um, and I'll just chat about a couple of things. Unless you guys have some questions. All right. So let's take the three breaths to go into the heart space. Simply closing the eyes, putting your attention onto your physical heart in your light within your heart and connecting your light to the light of the earth, to the heart of the earth. You can either breathe in that light, that energy, that loving, healing energy of the earth, breathing that right up through your feet and into the heart. Or you can just picture your heart light connecting with the heart light of the earth. However you do it, just make it your process, simple, easy. But do take in the breath. Second, we connect to source, soul, creation, God, and we breathe in that energy of creation into the heart. Next, we breathe in the energy of both earth and source, creation, into the heart together. We feel ourselves drop into the heart space, and as we exhale, we expand, we connect, we ground. Awesome. So let's see. We have a question from Olivia. For on the body healing purposes, I see you have a smaller personal set of the harmonic trio, which, yes, the harmonic creation field trio personal set are the rings of this size. Right here is a well patinaed personal harmonic creation field trio set. Um, and so the question is for the personal set versus the gateway pendant, which, yes, these are both the same power and potency, the same frequencies. Um, is the order of the rings on the gateway the same as the harmonic trio? So the order of the rings on the gateway is different than the orders on the other trios. None of the orders are exactly the same. On the gateway pendant, and they are listed all on the, the product page, but the gateway pendant is the golden fire on the outside, which this is actually the Wi-Fi ring. And then next we have the regeneration ring. And then in the center is that 333 earth resonance ring, the 333 megahertz. So with these guys, we have the golden fire on the outside, the 333 in the middle in the earth resonance, or I mean, sorry, the um, regeneration in the center. And then on the large trio, they're different yet. For the large trio, harmonic creation field trio, we have a regeneration on the outside. Then we have the golden fire. And then we have the 333 megahertz earth resonance. So they're all a little bit different on which ring is on the outside, but it does not matter um, as long as those three frequencies are together. They can even be in other tools too, um, you know, kind of like the dependence. You can use the infinity because this is the golden fire. This is the regeneration. Granted, this isn't the trio, but if you wanted to make it the trio, you could add any um, harmony or 333 ring to it. Uh, let's see, what is the 
And then Olivia's asking also, what is the gauge and is the order important? And, and no, definitely the order is not important on the trio. Um, the harmonic creation field trio, the water rings, the water rings are a 10 gauge um, is what we make the water rings out of. So the gals that dancing with water, um, you know, they, like they say, water does not require, you know, heavy gauges because water, um, it's just, you know, water is very easily malleable to energetics and emotion. Hey, Chris. Chris is asking, how does tensor effect work with how does tensor affect work with dragons? How about a healing for my dog Karma and her suture from her operations? Hey, yes, I see your doggy did go through some operations. So I'll send in some love to her. Um, so the tensor fields, how they work with dragons is basically the tensor fields um, and how they work with any being is that um, the tensor fields are holding a space, a higher vibration space. And those that are within that space um, are more in a line with that vibration. So it's kind of like um, when it's, it's sacred space or connecting from the heart. Whenever we are operating and immersed within that certain frequency, then it is harder for things not within that frequency range to be there. Um, so when we're working with any beings, it is nice to be within the tensor fields or using the tools because that is just another safety feature to make sure that those that we are then working with are on that same vibrational plane. Um, and that's why it's important to start from the heart is what we connect to on a vibrational plane. Um, so the fields and how we can work with the dragons within those fields is, is just that it is just that is that it creates a higher vibrational space um, to where we can better connect with the dragons because the dragons, you know, exist on a certain bandwidth of frequency and we're existing on a certain, well, we as in the standard human with standard perceptions exist on another bandwidth of frequency. And so if we can expand our bandwidth of frequency to where we are stepping in to with the dragons or the other beings or the angelics or whoever it is that you want to work with, then we are working within that same bandwidth where we can easier, more easily connect. Um, let's see. Oh, yep. And then John, John just got on here and he asked about the, the question about the grasshoppers. And yeah, John, please do watch the replay because, yep, that was the first question we ran through there. Um, and then Olivia asks, have you had feedback from people using the Hedica rings that it has helped to regulate hydration fluids in the body? No, actually, we haven't had those feedbacks from people with the headache rings, which is kind of surprising um, because anytime that you are structuring water, which the headache rings will do, I don't have any headache rings here, but, you know, there's the headache, the triskelion. So the triskelion, the headache, is going to restructure water. Um, it's going to you know, basically make it so that you, you, that your cells can absorb water better. So whether you're wearing a Hedica ring, um, you know, a finger ring made out of the Hedica, or you are within the tensor fields um, or carry a Hedica on you, you know, it should allow you to better hydrate because it is working with the water in your body. Also use it with the water that you drink and, you know, the gals at Dancing with Water will tell you about structured water and what it does for the, the living cells. Um, so yeah, definitely, Olivia, wearing the, you know, wearing a headache or carrying a headache on you is, is certainly going to help. Um, let's see. And then Olivia is also asking about S-J-O-G-E-N syndrome um, with severe dry eyes, skin, etc. 
So, yeah. Um, you know, and, and so Olivia is just talking about her friend with the syndrome, with the, the dry eyes and skin, et cetera, for suggesting, you know, maybe the Hedica or the other tools. And totally, you know, the, the Hedica is simply, it's a symbol. It's a way for us to connect to water, the spirit of water, the water elemental. And so if we work with the water elemental, when we have things like this going on, yeah, it, it is definitely a beneficial thing. Um, and again, you know, actually need a Hedica, if you can just connect directly to the Hedica, the spirit itself. All right. So let's see. Marla asks, I live next door to a very mean man. Um, and I use the situation to help me develop my ability to stay balanced. Um, can you suggest how to use the tools to help protect myself from his angry energy? So, you know, the tools are transformative. They're transformative for the environment and the people in the environment but they're also transformative for us. So whenever we find something that is irritating us, has our attention somehow, there is a reason that it has our attention. And, you know, anymore we see that the reason that things come into our awareness and get our attention is simply because it needs the light shined on it. And so, you know, really, Marla, for protecting yourself from this angry energy, using the tools is one is going to shift you and how you see and perceive and interact. And two, it will shift him being in the field of the tools. So if you have like a golden fire generator or a pyramid or something, any kind of tool that is working for the environment, it is going to be working with whoever's in that environment. You can also do things like anchoring columns of light. Um, we have a lot of videos where we actually go soul to soul with other people and you can go soul to soul with them. One of the ways that we can affect people in a positive manner is going into the heart space that we just did take the three breaths the breath from earth the breath from source soul the third breath coming to the center when we're in a heart space you can do this thing that we call the infinite heart and it's simply making infinity a figure eight and just imagining i just always use my hand to make this imaginary imaginary field that connects from your heart to the heart of the person that you're having the issues with. Now, Brenda, my sister Brenda, who channels the Elders Three, the Elders Three, you know, they that was one of the first tools that they gave us was that infinite heart technique, where we connect to others and it shifts them, um, because when we're in our heart and we're connecting heart to heart with another, we're not connecting there to their junk. We're connecting soul to soul. And when we are connecting our heart, when we are in the heart space and we're connecting our heart to another, it brings them into their heart space. It brings them that higher connection with the soul. When somebody is angry all the time, angry, mean, they obviously need a lot of healing. It's like I teach my daughter, you know, love the bullies. Um, that's how we shift them. So, yeah, totally, Marla. I would say, um, you know, holding him in a space within the heart is going to do a lot of great things. And just having the tools around, too. Um, let's see. Renard asks, have you worked with other qubits like phi or personal qubits? Um, so the qubits that, yes, we've worked with a lot of qubits. Um, we've tested a lot of qubits out over the years. Um, personal qubits, no, personal qubits do not work as a tensor ring. I've seen so many people out there making personal qubit tensor rings. I guarantee you they do not produce a tensor field. Personal qubits do not. Um, now, 
people, when you make a tool, when people make a tool and they have their intentions into that tool, like of making a personal qubit, it is going to feel really good for them. They're going to get the energy from it because it is their manifestation, their creation, their intention in that tool. They take that tool and they explain everything and about how this is and how they made it and they hand it to another person and the next person buys the story, that reality, that belief. And when they buy into it, then they are getting that energy too. But they take that personal cubit, you drop it on the ground, somebody comes along, picks it up. It is just a piece of copper to that person. That's it. Unlike a tensor field, um, they're producing a tensor field, tensor rings. Um, so no, personal qubits will not produce a working tensor field. They might produce something that a person can feel energy from, but it's not a tensor ring. Um, the phi qubit, I have no idea about the phi. There's a lot of qubits out there that I see that people are finding that aren't working, but you know, it's part of a journey. Um, I'm really blessed to have my sister Brenda through the whole stages of trial and error and working with the different qubits and frequencies because, um, yeah, there's some of them that I could feel and that, that I thought they were a working ring, but in reality, they were not producing a tensor field. It was because my intentions, when I created that, I was still receiving an energetic from it. Um, so let's see, Samson, question about the shaman fairy dra dragon golden fire wand I've been using as a pendant. Is the direction of energy going up and down just wondering what is the top and the bottom of the wand. So with this little guy here, um, there you can use it either way. So the energy is going to be just innately, if this guy is just sitting here, the energy is flowing both ways. It's, it's kind of like in a coil where it is flowing out this way and around and in this way. And then it's also flowing out this way and in this way. So it's, it's, it's creating like a torus field. Um, but when you use the wand and you are grabbing it and you are intending to run energy, it's just that soft intention and you grabbing it at one end and pointing it that it is going to create then the flow of energy. So this is just all self-contained right here in a nice little unit. You put your attention onto it and you're intending to run energy then all the energy from this is going to just flow where your attention goes. Um, what's the best tool for the food in the fridge? Use outside or inside the fridge. Um, you know, I really like the 15 inch golden fire ring is a great sized ring. Um, you know, if you have a larger fridge, you can get a 20 inch ring. Now the 15 inch ring it, and it's a, you know, it's a fairly inexpensive ring compared to like the 20, 29 inch rings. Um, the 15 inch golden fire ring, you can sit it inside of the fridge. You can sit it on top of the fridge. Doesn't matter. What I traditionally have done before um, in the space that I'm at now, I can't put stuff on top of my fridge now because there's a cabinet. But what I've usually done is I'll usually put like a 29 inch ring or 20 inch ring or a 15 inch ring, doesn't matter, on top of the refrigerator. And then within that golden fire ring, I'll start to put all of my supplements, my stones and my crystals, my pendants, uh, my essential oils, and I'll just put all of that in the ring on top of the refrigerator. Because then within that column, and remember whatever you put within the column of a ring, it is gonna be broadcasting that energy. So then all the crystals, supplements, everything is going to be then broadcast down into the food within the fridge. So that's, that's how I would, you know, suggest using the, the rings for the refrigerator. Um, hey, Bloss, 
how far does the Taurus versus the Sun disk energy radiate? So the Taurus and the Sun disk are both going to be about the size of a room innately. Now, the golden fire, that energy field, especially from that gold, well, just from the golden fire Taurus, that golden fire field, it's, you know, it it is more tangible filling in these vibrational planes, the physical, mental, emotional, um, where the cosmic sun disk, the regeneration Taurus, the cosmic sun disk, that field it's kind of like the the tensor field generators. The golden fire generator goes out two miles, but then a regeneration generator, um, it's not about how far it expands. It only expands about the size of a house, but it expands throughout all these different dimensions and into spaces beyond frequency. And so when we're comparing the Taurus versus the sun disk on how far it goes they both cover about a home but the sun disk is expanding throughout a greater space throughout universes throughout um dimensions um it, it, it's it's more expansive through multiple layers if that makes sense uh, what's the best tool to use under the bed or the mattress? Um, you know, really, you can use the, the rings. So using the practitioner rings under a bed is an okay thing. But when you put something, when you put a ring under a bed, it's producing a column of light. So if you, if this is you, and you're sleeping with un, under that ring, that ring is only going to be only encompassing a certain part of you when it is under your bed. Now, if you sleep with a ring above your head, then you're going to be encompassed within this whole column of light because this ring is producing a column. So when you are laying horizontal and the ring is there, you will be sleeping within that column of light. Um, so the practitioner rings are phenomenal for the bed. But I tell you what, the Golden Fire Taurus and the Cosmic Sun Disc are two tools that the majority of us who own them sleep with them. You know, especially, you know, the Golden Fire Taurus was one that we started to notice that it was a tool that almost everybody who got them was sleeping with them. Um, that was just what they naturally did. Now, so those are fantastic. So the golden fire disc to sleep with, but then the cosmic sun disc to sleep with, that one's a little different because it is, it expands, it um, it does work with the body. Um, so sleeping with the cosmic sun disc is going to shift and change you a lot. Um, so I'd say the cosmic sun disc is one of the best to sleep with. All right. So let's see. We've gotten through all of the questions here. Now then, um, we'll go back over here to the chat and see where we're at on the chat side. So let's see. Olivia's asking about increasing peace in her apartment and complex in the sphere. Would you suggest a harmony or a Gaia sphere? So really, the the harmony generator is probably not the best name for these because if you're trying to bring harmony into a space, I would suggest the golden fire. The harmony is great, but the golden fire is doing a lot more work. And so the golden fire is one that is going to be, um, you know, clearing thought forms, it's going to be clearing emotion stuff, as well as electromagnetics, as well as connecting people more to themselves. So really, Olivia, I would suggest, um, you know, a golden fire generator. Now, the difference between a golden fire generator and the golden fire Gaia sphere would simply be that the Gaia sphere, um, 
it does the same thing, covers the same area, but the Gaia sphere is connecting hearts. It is connecting the heart of every person within that field, every being within that field. Now, it's not a huge, huge difference for just daily living. Well, it could be um, having a Gaia sphere versus a tensor field generator in the golden fire. But, you know, for price comparison, I would say just get the generator. Um, the Gaia sphere, the golden fire Gaia, I like it for when I go out and I teach workshops or I set up someplace to be a presenter is I like to bring that golden fire Gaia sphere because it creates more of a cohesive environment for basically that soul to soul interaction, teaching, receiving, sharing. Um, so let's see. And then, so Olivia's going on about I never used the harmony ring so far. When interacting with Zoom, you suggest a Gaia sphere, so it's better with larger dynamics. And would harmony still be good for this purpose? Yeah, and again, um, the harmony generators are great, but really to bring more peace and harmony, I would suggest the golden fire because it's going to do a lot more work. Um, yeah, and so as far as, yeah, and, and I think I've explained well enough between the Gaia and the tensor field generator and if you still have some questions, please do ask. Um, let's see. And Marla. Let's see. Marla. Oh, so Martin here is. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. I was reading a, a chat here, you guys, about um, somebody giving uh, Marla some, some ideas. Um, Let's see. So, yeah, so Martin was um, giving some advice about the Harmony Generator and putting the um, the TV, the Tower Busters, Organite with them. Yeah, and that's it. You know, the, the generators, well, all of the tensor tools work really well with, um, with, with Organite for sure. And that was, you know, another thing about the the organite that I wanted to touch on to is just um, how phenomenal orgone is when you mix it with a tensor ring and how it just amplifies everything. Um, all right. And let's see. And then Bloss is asking, are the energy strength of the golden fire generator pendant versus the original copper golden fire generator? Is that the same? Let me see the golden fire generator pendant versus the original copper golden fire generator. Okay, so we used to make a do I have one here? No, we used to make a little one inch golden fire generator out of copper. And um, I think we still do actually. And so the copper one inch golden fire generator and the silver golden fire generator one inch are exactly the same. Um, So the, the golden fire generator one inch is not, does not cover the si same size of field as the rest of the golden fire generators. So the larger golden fire generators, all the golden fire generators have the same power potency and cover the same field, except for the one inch. The one inch generator, um, it doesn't, when it expands out, it is not is it is not as a strong of a field for that area as it is just within the personal space. So the one inch golden fire generator is more for your personal field and your immediate field versus working with the neighborhood. Um, so let's see here. And let's see, and then Castellina's uh, was asking here about uh, the golden the golden fire and light wand and how it started to patina a bit. And, and that is true with the brass. The brass is, um, you know, it does have copper in it as well. You know, that's brass is 
has copper in it. And so it does get that patina. So in order to brighten up your golden fire and light wands for the brass, we suggest using steel wool. Um, a fine grit of steel wool will come along and you can just polish. So you'll be able to polish, um, you know, your golden fire and light wands with a fine grade of steel wool. So, well, you guys and gals and everybody else, um, thank you for being here today. Oh, I see we got one more question. How can I program the quantum grid pyramid for manifesting? Um, simply when you set the pyramid in your space, um, you just set the intention of what you want that field to be, uh, you know, greater manifestation. Um, you know, simply when we are connected, when we bring in more of our light, we are becoming greater and greater creators, manifestors. But the thing about manifesting is manifesting is one of the lower lungs rungs in creation. The more we can do our own connecting work, the more we step into being the role of creator. You know, I see people manifesting instantly and crazily right now. And so, you know, it's just kind of showing us that we really have to be cautious of our thought forms, our emotions, our, our unconscious. We have to be conscious of that because I, we see people manifesting and creating in that way. Um, but using the quantum grid point or any of the tools, it is simply just going to help you step more into your own space, into your heart, bringing more of your light in. And that just allows you to step more into being a creator of creators, instant manifestors. Um, and so, yeah, it's just a simple intention, soft intention when you set the, um, when you set the pyramid in. All right. Oh yeah. Martin's talking about the tower busters. Yeah. I tell you what, aluminum, I tell you what, when you use aluminum in organite, it is, a spirit sterilizer. I will not go near aluminum and organite because it, yeah. Um, there's somebody, when I first started my journey, somebody was selling these um, little orgone pucks to keep bad spirits away. Well, they were keeping everything away. Um, you know, they, they were using some funky, funky stuff. Um, but anyway. All right, so I guess we are probably done with our 50 questions Friday here again. If you guys haven't listened to the um, the activation that Brenda did here a couple weeks ago, please do check that out. It's on our YouTube channel, um, and it is the, the Quantum Heart Activation. And she walks you through and helps to clear old programs like suffering, lack, all of that fun stuff. So when we're talking about manifesting and creating, that is a great place to start is to go through and listen to Brenda on her YouTube or on our YouTube channel, Brenda's um, latest video that we posted there because it is clearing a lot of stuff and it is helping us connect a whole lot more. So please do check out that video and yeah, we'll see you guys next time. Um, and then for you guys who are live here, we're doing a thing this weekend with Loren Gailey. So keep an eye out there. I'm going to be doing some great things here later today. Here actually just in about um, three hours, three or four hours here, I will be on um, with the Loren Gailey show. And um, we'll get an email sent out about that here before that occurs. And on that show, we did, um, we're doing some really great meditations and things, activations, and then also selling a upcoming package for um, an online class that we're going to be doing. 
And it's actually more of an online activations. Um, we're going to be working with the quantum heart. So anyway, I guess we will see you all next time. Thank you for being here. Take care, you guys.